Dave, so although it's springtime, uh, not necessarily the time that you'd associate wearing lots of clothing, you get to the evening and the temperature can just suddenly yeah. drop. So obviously you've got to be kitted out. So what are you wearing there for us? This is the uh, Force 10 clothing, um, jacket and trousers. Um, the trousers, you can either wear as like over trousers, um, but at the moment when it's not particularly bitter cold, I'm just wearing them on their own. Just, right. you know, like yep. combat trousers, they're perfect really. And they're waterproof as well. So if you're messing about with fish or kneeling down, yep. what have you, and get wet on them, they, it just dries out straight away. Uh, jacket's a lovely bit of kit. It's got um, fleece inside the pockets, which is nice for warming mm. your fingers up in the evening. It's a nice and thick bit of clothing, fleece lined. Lots of pockets on it though, mate. Yeah, room yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all little bits hidden away here, there and everywhere for all your bits that you might need. Um, it's also got a really nice big hood on it, um, which is handy because it's big enough to fit over your, your hat or whatever, yeah. you know. Got a bit of a peak on that as yeah, well. Yeah, so yeah, it's a bit of a peak cap. Obviously, we'll keep the wind out your neck and, and that. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really nice bit of kit. They come as separates. Yeah. We also do an alternative to this. Um, we've got a smock version of the top, which okay, is so more this, of a pullover. Yeah, whereas this is a full zip jacket. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. People have different preferences. Personally, I, you know, I quite like a smock. Mm. But you just put it easy over enough the top. to get on and off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It just slides over easy enough. It's nice and spacious, nice and roomy. Um, yeah, it's got a, a through pocket on the front, which is fleece lined right through. You can like a is muff. That, uh, oh, okay. That's a that's a flap that you'll undo. These are so on and off nice and quickly. Yeah, and also they come in handy if you do get hot. So if you've got the smock on, maybe you're moving swims, or yeah, it might be cold in the morning when you're packing up and you push the barrel yeah. and you're getting a bit warm. If you undo them, a bit like on the skin, just you know, yeah. there's a, a little right, bit of air flow in there. Let's see out some of the sort of hot air. Um, so yeah, basically there's the three items in the Force 10. There's literally something to suit you, your own preference, yeah, then, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. the, Everything proof. Right, mate. Did a lot of work through the winter with you for the magazine. Yeah. Um, obviously, the big crux of winter fishing is keeping warm and comfortable. Yeah, and I know this particular piece of clothing is a favourite of yours. And you, you well, every time I see you, you yeah. seem to have it on. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's, you can see it's had a fair bit of yeah. use. <laughs> yeah. Covered in various bacon sandwiches and whatever. Yeah. I wore this. I didn't only wear this for fishing this winter. I probably wore this every single day of the winter gong. So I use it for dog walking as well. Right. It's to me, it's just like a survival suit. It, yeah. Hence the name. Yeah. The, what is yeah. it? Thermotech Survivor. Survivor. Yeah. Um, you put it on, it's like putting a sleeping bag around you. Mm. It's incredible. Uh, and in no time at all, it puffs right up with, with trapped warm air. Right. Um, literally, whatever, if it's howling winds, freezing cold, you put this on, it just all goes away. Immediately. It immediately nice and goes away. Okay. Uh, and the longer you wear it, the warmer you get with it. It doesn't look too heavy either for Oh, it's for got no weight to it. Top. It's got no right. weight to it at all. And like I say, when you've worn it for a couple of hours and it's puffed up, with warm air, it's, it's just like having a mm. great big toasty balloon around you of warmth. Nice. It's, uh, it's a fantastic bit of kit. Front pockets. Yeah, it's got, pocket, it's got pocket a through pocket, which I like that, because, you know, it's like a pouch. Yeah, you yeah, can sort of hold your own yeah, hands nice. inside and yeah. keep them warm. Yeah. Um, you've got this huge pouch mm. pocket, um, which I, I just dump absolutely everything mm. in. When I'm out dog walking, I've got the, the ball and the lead and the thing and right. everything in there. Yeah. I'm pregnant, you know, but yeah. when I'm fishing, I've got the phone and the sound of box and, you know, whatever you want all chucked yeah. in there, car keys and everything. No, it's an it's a, it's a absolutely bomb proof bit of kit. Spot on. I love it. So I, I like the it. smock style to it as well as opposed to a full zip. I like that. I do, yeah, nice. yeah, I do. And I think there's, there's nowhere for anything to get in at you. Mm. Once you're in there, you're warm. Mm. And that's what you can ask for, isn't it? From a Brilliant, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, love it. Well, here we are at the end of what's been a very productive day. I think I've had somewhere in the region of about eight fish today, up to, I suppose, the biggest one was around 24, 25 pounds, maybe even. Um, everything's out there, all set for the night. Um, that's the beauty of carp fishing, it's not like any other sort of carp fishing, you know, most other anglers pack up and go home before it even gets dark, but I, I love spending the night out next to a carp lake. Um, I know they show really well through the night here and I'm hoping for a bit of a feeding spell, everything's set up ready. It's just nice to be out here really. They've locked the gates for the complex now, everything's secure, there's nobody going to be walking about. Um, so I think I might sit up for a couple of hours, have a couple of cups of tea. Uh, and just see what transpires. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the night ahead.
Well, I set the alarm this morning for half past five. Um, hoping to be up first light, see a few fish showing, reposition the baits. But uh, as you can see, the morning didn't exactly happen. The fog came in in the night and uh, half past five this morning, you couldn't even see the rods. Um, hasn't lifted a lot yet, really. Um, but the thing about foggy conditions in the morning, it's usually a sign that the air pressure is rising, um, which brings the fish higher in the water. So when the sun does burn the fog off eventually, I reckon it's gonna be a good day for zig rig fishing. Um, so I say when it does blow away, I'm gonna bring all the rods in, set them all up with zigs at various levels. Um, they're quite famous lakes for zig fishing uh, around the linear complex, all this Oxfordshire area. Um, it's always responded well to, to zigs, little tiny bits of foam, sort of mid-water. Um, so hopefully throughout the morning, you know, when the sun gets out, get them out there and uh, run through how I do my zigs. I've caught a lot of fish over the last couple of years on zigs, especially in colder water conditions like this sort of early spring. So, uh, yeah, tie a few up, get them out there and see if we can bag a couple in mid-water. Oh, here we go. Is it a duck or a take? He's going. We're in. Lovely job. Now oh, that's handy. Sure, I read somewhere that you can't catch fish in the fog. So, somebody was wrong. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I think the line settled in the night over something or through something. I can feel the fish the other side, but I can also feel some sort of a snag or I know there's a couple of subsurface reed beds out there. I don't know if the line's wrapped around that. Uh-oh. No, oh, he's come off. I thought it was going off. Just feel it dragging across the top of something. Oh, well. At least I know they're feeding out there anyway. Do I lose any flesh? just cast this one out to a, a showing fish. They've just started showing in the last half an hour. They've been out there five minutes. Just shows like saying yes to you, a little, little rechuck and uh, make all the difference. Now the old sun's come out. It's, gone from freezing fog to absolutely boiling. I was expecting to see a few fish hit the surface and get the zigs out, but this is the second bite on the bottom. And they just started sort of rolling and bubbling a bit, so I think I'm gonna stick with the bottom rigs for a little while. Just cast single baits onto everything that shows. It's always a good method at this time of year anyway. See the leader not coming up, he's coming. Yeah, you can see him right out there, 20 yards out, this gin clear water. Try the bubbles coming up from him there.
There he comes. A scaly one. So, Dave, no shortage of terminal tackle on the market these days. No. Uh, I know you've got something tucked away in there which is ideal for keeping yep. it all in one place. Yep, I have indeed. This is the all-in-one rig station. Hardcore range. Nice chunky zips yep. again, as with yep. all the other hardcore stuff. Oh yeah, all of it's built to it's last. It's not breaking this stuff, is it? No, it's really, all, really solid. It's really, solid. I mean, it's really good material and really heavy duty zips. Um, this is taking all your bulk terminal tackle. Right. Like you say, there's, there's plenty of it on the market. Mm. Um, some guys take more than others, but it doesn't matter how much you took, you can get it in here. Um, I keep all my day-to-day -day bits in a little bag as I need it, but generally my bulk of my tackle goes in here. Um, as you can see, the space is for everything, baiting needles, all your various hook link materials. So you've got these little boxes in there, are they, are they, have you put those in? Or? No, 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 they all comes with it. Yeah, everything apart from the spools of the line. Oh, okay. Um, now it comes supplied with four of these little Oh, brilliant. Hook things, and they've also got like a, a sculpted front, right? So you, you don't have to yeah. lick your finger and yeah. dig things out. If you want something, you just slide it up the front, and there it is. Perfect. So you keep your like your hooks. So you've got some rubbers yeah, and yeah, and all, all, all your sorts of bits rubbers, and bobs, just bits and bobs. Everyone's got a different, you know, a different setup and a different mm. idea of what they want. We're um, back to this organisation theme, which runs throughout all of the hardcore stuff, yeah. don't we? It's, it's it's there to make life genuinely easy. For Absolutely, you. yeah. There's a place for everything, and everything in its place, yeah. really. And then this one, I presume, this one's for your, rigs, yeah. It? This is for your ready tied rigs, um, especially Andy, if you use stiff links, yeah. Um, when you sort of for anything you want to keep in shape, um, you know, you can obviously just hook the hooks through there, and you've got two little pouches, two little um, containers at the end there that have got your mat pins in. Mm -hmm. So you just stretch them out and pop that through the swivel. I mean, you you you, you pay money. Just for something like that. Oh, on absolutely. Own, so to yeah. get it all included in the yeah, one bag. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's I'm fantastic. sure you probably pay as much for that as you pay for the, the whole setup. Mm. I like you say, um, a lot of people do like to take a variety of bits and bobs with them, so I think yeah. that'll be extremely popular. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Oh, here we go. Lovely little scaly one. Not a monster, but a pretty fish. While I've got them on the bank, I'm just going to run through the sort of basics of looking after a fish on the bank because obviously that's so, so important. I mean, these are going to grow on to be fantastic, great big scaly fish. So you've got to give them as much care as possible. What I've done here before I've even got him out of the water, I've got the mat out, put half a bucket of water on the mat. It's quite sunny and bright and quite warm now, so it's nice and cold and wet. Got everything ready. Scales are already zeroed in before he's on the mat. Slings laid out in a way that I can go straight in it, it's not made sure it's not tangled inside out. So everything's ready to go so the fish spends as little time as possible out of the water. As you lay them into the, the way sling, just use your hand under there, tuck that fin up and that fin up just to make sure when you put them in you're not bending them back, which will break the ray and the fin. So Keep them like that, straight into the bottom. Fold them over. Depending on what sling you're using, if you've got a big fish, it's best to zip it up first. I've got a, a small fish in a large sling here, so I know I've got that depth of the sides. So I'm not gonna zip this one. Like I say, everything's zeroed in already. Pop him up on the scales. He's 15 pounds. Don't hold them up there for ages, worrying about whether they're 15 pound two or 15 pound three, or it doesn't really make a, a lot of difference. You, the odd ounce here and there. 
unless of course it's your personal best or, or bigger than your mate's personal best and you want to set the record straight but in general close enough always have a bucket of water on hand keep the fish well wet and your hands wet and there he is up for a quick couple of trophy shots and then straight back down into the sling back into the lake roll him over tuck those fins in if he does flat just cover his eyes one hand on the back one hand over his head a little bit of firm pressure keep him down in the middle of that mat if you're transporting the fish always zip it up in case he has a little Mad fit halfway there. There he is. Two minutes on the bank. Photograph weighed and ready to go back in. Okay, if you're in a swim like this, which is quite shallow gravel, put a pair of boots on, roll your trousers up, whatever it takes. Just get out till you've got a decent depth. You can see there I've got a welly depth. Plenty of room there. Just in case when he you release him, he gives a little burst of energy and bashes his flanks on the gravel. No need to lift him out again. You've already seen him, photographed him. Hold him till he's strong. And away he goes. Safe and sound. Just the way we like it. Right, Dave, surely one of the most important items in the carp angler's armoury, if you like, is a decent bite alarm. And yeah. I know the TFG ones, you're particularly proud of these, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been, it was probably two years ago now I started working on these from prototype. Um, I'm very happy with these. I think they're brilliant, brilliant little alarms. I like simplicity in an alarm. Mm. You know, on, off, and a nice loud alarm, which these are. Um, it's got a simple on off switch on the side. Um, it's got a two magnet roller on the top there um, there's not a lot really that can possibly go wrong with them right you know uh, they take a decent 12 volt battery which seems to last forever um, like I say they're loud they're simple and they work and that's really basically all, all you need from an alarm you need reliability um, and these are ultimately reliable I guess that's alarms. the crux of it really with any alarm you, you can have all singing all dancing yeah. you get alarms these days with more buttons and then you Absolutely, know what to do yeah, with but yeah. essentially first and foremost it has to be reliable it has to it? be reliable and like you say you know alarms are getting very complicated especially with the digital alarms mm. that do everything and you have to keep referring to the handbook to, to even set them up with these I just get to the lake flick the on switch and I know exactly what they're going to do um, they come in a set of three with a remote and it's a very good remote uh, the range is excellent on it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting one actually because we get asked on the magazine all the time the, the, the common question is why do you need a range of 200 metres on uh, an alarm because you're never going to be 200 metres That's away. not the, 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 the no, point exactly. though. The point is it's like anything why do you need a car that can go 180 mile an hour when the speed, national speed limit is 70 mm. it's because it does 70 nicer than a car that only does 80 right. and it's the same with the range on a sounder box if it will do 200 metres it'll always do 30 metres. So it's about the strength and reliability Absolutely, of the signal more yeah. than anything Whereas else. if you get one that only does 30 metres, it might not always do that 30 mm. metres if you're behind trees or bushes. So if it's got a, a longer range, a stronger signal, then it's guaranteed to do the shorter signal every time. And I know, um, I know over the last couple of years doing all the features in the magazine with you, I, I, you know, I can honestly vouch for the fact that you have used and tested and developed these yeah. over a period of time. And I know you know, I've seen the state of some of the stuff that you use, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. but like we say, we, we can't kind of harp on about it too much, I guess, but it is just so important that they're reliable. Yeah, they? absolutely. The last thing you want is to be on a water, get a bite in the middle of the night and know nothing yeah, about it. Yeah, wake up in the morning, look out there, and, and one's been and gone because yeah. your alarm's let you down. Even from a fish safety point of view, yeah, you know, you it, need to it's know. not an option, it's, it, it can't happen. Mm. You know, you've got your alarm's got to work every single time, and that's what these do. They're simple, reliable, and I use them for all of my fishing, as you cool. know. Yeah. And because these alarms are, as you can tell, quite loud, we also supply these little mufflers and they just pop nicely in the front there and that just reduces the output from the actual head. Um, obviously like if you're in a stalking situation, 
uh, or if you don't want the bloke next door to know you've caught a fish, for whatever reason, if you want your alarm quietened down, just pop one of them in the front. Simple as that, just pops in and out. When you're fishing on those big pits where the fish can easily move out of range, especially under pressure, or you're just fishing distant islands or you just want to hit the horizon, you're going to need a reel that can do the job. Um, and this is an ideal tool. If you can see there, you've got a huge, great tapered spool, a lovely, perfect line lay that's going to add 10, 15, maybe 20 yards to your cast, depending on your casting ability. Uh, this is the V10, this reel. Um, I'd say mainly made for, for pure out distance. Um, but you still use it close in. You know, it's, it's no disadvantage close in, but it will give you extra yards on the top end of your cast. Um, it's lovely smooth gearing on it, and it's got a good retrieve, which obviously you're going to need if you're fishing out at distances 120, 130 metres out. You're going to want to be able to get it back easy enough. Um, great big handle, great big grip, perfect for cranking it in. It's got a good gearing system, it's nice and smooth. Um, and for distance fishing, you know, you can't beat it really. They're very, very competitively priced as well. You know, you're not going to break the bank for a set of three of these. Um, and they'll do everything that a far more expensive reel will do with ease. I'm playing this one a little bit more carefully. This is the first bite on a zig. And I've only got a small look on there, a long hook link. There's been a lot of fish topping out there in the middle. And I put a five foot, I think this is, yeah, five foot zig out in about seven foot of water. So that's just a small bit of black foam, two inches below the surface. To, sorry, two feet below the surface. And as they're cruising along, they've just dropped down and nailed it. I'm hoping he's going to stay up nice and high in the water. The only thing that worries me is the amount of gravel lumps and bits of sunken reeds and that that are out there. But at the moment, it's moving nicely. It was a bit of a stroke of luck really. Um, we ain't got long left on this session and already packed all the bivvy and half my stuff away. But I did think the zigs had come on come into play eventually and uh, last knockings away it's gone. See there, typical zig hook in that, nailed right in the middle of the bottom lip. Tiny bit of black and yellow foam, and that little size eight. That weren't never falling off. And that's what done it. Pretty little fish, little scaly one. He's going to be a corker when he's 30 pound. Lovely. Okay, and here we go, our final fish of the trip down at Linear Fisheries. Not the biggest one of the trip by any means, but a nice way to finish on a zig. 
lovely little fish, red fish on oh, three or four different methods over the couple of days we've been here. Close in, at range, over bait, single pop-ups and now zigs. What you might call the full set. And away he goes. The end to a very successful session.